Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna be covering some of the updates to AutoFilter that came out when Ableton updated live to 9.5. There's some pretty exciting new features. Ableton has a partnership with Cytomic and they've teamed up to build in some analog modeled filters into AutoFilter. You'll also find those in Operator, Sampler, and Simpler. It's a pretty huge upgrade as the new filter types are quite powerful. And one especially exciting thing for me is they've also introduced a morphing function into the filter. So that used to only be available in samplers filter and I've always wanted that as a insert effect so I can use that on other synths and other forms of audio. So we're gonna be exploring the new cytomic filters and in particular that morphing filter which is super exciting for anybody doing bass sound design where you wanna create any neuro-ish or dubstep style sounds. So let's go check out the fresh auto filter. <laughs> I wanted to showcase the new analog filter modeling and morphing functions in a neuro style bass patch. So I created a source sound in X for Serum using amplitude modulation. This makes the patch really bright and gritty with tons of harmonics for the filter to cut through. Here's a version with the morphing auto filter. <laughs> And here's the original source sound without the rack. As always, I've included the full Ableton Live set as a free download so you can grab this bass loop plus the entire rack containing auto filter. Ableton's already done a great job at going through all the various updates to AutoFilter, so rather than just parroting things they've already discussed, I'm going to cherry pick a couple of what I think are the best new features and show you guys how I'm using them to create this bass sound. The first thing you'll notice is that I'm using an audio effect rack. This rack actually contains three separate instances of AutoFilter. There's a couple reasons why I'm doing this. First up, it allows me to split the signal into different frequency bands, processing each one with a separate and unique chain of effects. Next, it allows me to use the powerful macro mapping browser, and I can scale and invert the ranges of modulation on key parameters. This gives me tons of extra control. And finally, it drastically simplifies my track automation process by allowing me to map multiple core parameters to a single macro knob and just use track automation on that single knob. That way I can do this fairly complex automation. As you can see, I've drawn in a lot of different uh, envelopes here on the breakpoints of the track automation. It allows me to do some fairly complex stuff on a variety of different parameters. <laughs> Let's take a peek inside the rack. You'll see two chains, Morph, Filter, and Sub. We'll have a look at the Morph Filter chain first. First up in the chain, we have two instances of Saturator running medium curve at 50% wet. You'll see me doing this a lot with bases and filters. The Saturators are adding nice fat harmonics to give the filter something to cut through. There's a noticeable difference in sound when you add saturation or distortion just before a filter, especially when that filter is running some form of bandpass or low pass where it's removing the higher order harmonics. Let's check out how this sounds with the saturators and without them. Next up, we've got our first instance of auto filter. You'll see to the right of all the standard filter types, I've selected the morph filter. When you pick this, you get a morph parameter that changes the shape of the filter from low pass to band pass to high pass to notch, and finally all the way back to the beginning to low pass again. Better yet, unlike some state variable filters, this morph function is completely independent of the cutoff position. You can change the filter shape by using the morph parameter and change the filter cutoff on two completely separate macros or automation lanes. This is just epic. Live 9.5 introduced new analog circuit types from Cytomic. They are OSR, 
MS2, SMP, and PRD. However, only the default clean and OSR types are available for the morphing filter shape. That's okay with me though, because my favorite circuit is actually the OSR. The reason I like it is because its resonance is limited by a hard clipping diode that gives it a unique sound and it's actually able to self-oscillate when you push the resonance high enough. Let's demonstrate this in a fresh instance of auto filter. The resonance parameter for the analog filters actually goes all the way up to 125%. If you turn it to 100% or higher, the filter will self-oscillate. Then you can tune it with the cutoff frequency. I found that you need a little bit of an input signal to get it going, but it'll generate its own sound just from the extreme resonance after that. Although the ability to self-oscillate the filter is pretty sweet, I'm not actually using that in this example. In fact, I'm not using any resonance at all. The core of this sound is coming from the modulation of the morph and cutoff frequency simultaneously. If you look at the macro mapping browser, you'll see macro 1 is modulating frequency from 100 to 1500 Hz, and morph from 0 to 81, which goes from low pass to band pass to high pass. I'm using the 12 decibels per octave slope, which gives the filter a bit of a wider stance, allowing more frequencies to come through. Following this is a second instance of auto filter, also running the OSR circuit with a 12 dB per octave slope. But instead of using the morphing filter, I'm running a low pass filter type. The reason I added this is to attenuate some of the really harsh, brittle sounding upper harmonics that come into play from the amplitude modulation in the original source sound. You'll see I've mapped three parameters here, cutoff frequency, resonance, and drive to macros one, five, and six on the rack. I've also inverted the range in the mapping browser so that when the first filter is coming up, the second filter is actually coming down. So as the first filter is moving up the frequency spectrum towards a high pass, it's beginning to let more high end through. While at the same time, the second filter is removing progressively more high end. This gives us some really nice control over the top end of the sound. After the filters, we have a few extra effects to cap off the chain. We've got an EQ8, scooping the mids and touching up the rest of the mids and highs and then rolling off a bit of extreme high end and low end. We've got a compressor smoothing things out from all that filter mod, and I've mapped the compressor wet dry to macro seven so that you have control over that from the front panel of the rack. We also have my emulation of Massive's Dimension Expander and a Max for Live Convolution Reverb Pro adding some ambience with a very short impulse response. Together, these effects create a short and wide slapback style room sound that you can control from the final macro. All right. Let's take a look at the second chain now, labeled add sub. The purpose of this is to, well, add sub, yeah. <laughs> Let me explain why though. If we look at the morph filter, the top chain, you'll see that as you turn up macro one, the cutoff increases and the filter begins to shift to a band pass and then eventually to a high pass. This takes a bunch of the low end out of the sound and being a bass sound, well, we can't have that now, can we? So how I fixed this was by adding in this second chain. Let's explore what's in it. First up is a saturator running analog clip for some gentle, fat, low end warmth. It's also in parallel to allow some of the dry signal to pass through. Drive is mapped to macro two called subsaturate if you wanna add a bit of extra girth to the low end. After that, we have our third and final auto filter also running the OSR circuit, 12 dB per octave slope, in low pass. The cutoff frequency, resonance, 
and drive have all been mapped to macro 1, macro 3, and macro 4, respectively. The most important mapping here is the cutoff frequency. It's set up so that as you increase macro 1 and begin to reduce the low end of the top chain, it lets through more and more frequencies. Its range is set to between 100 and 300 Hz. Normally, this would double the sub below this amount, but I've added a second layer of control here where macro 1 also maps to the entire volume of this chain, so that when macro 1 is at minimum, the chain's volume is negative infinity, and then it comes up in volume as the macro increases. I played with this a bit by ear and tweaked it so that the result was nice and balanced between the two chains. Finalizing this chain is a utility device converting the signal to mono by grabbing the left channel only, and that's just making sure that your subs are nice and tight and in the center. So let's use solo on the subchain to compare and contrast what it's doing with the entire output of the rack. Sweet. So that's the Neuromorph Autofilter Rack. When you grab the free download, you can add this to your library and save yourself the time and hassle of having to build this thing from the ground up and do all the mappings yourself. To add this to your library, all you do is go to your user library in the browser, go to Presets, and then either add a folder of your own or navigate to one you've already built, and then simply drag the rack in and save it. <laughs> Okay, let's recap some of the core things and tips we covered today. We explored the new Cytomic OSR filter circuit, showing how it can self-oscillate. We delved into the new Morph filter type, displaying how it can be used in neuro based sound design. When you're doing this, use the power of Live's racks. They let you supercharge your sound design with macros. You can map multiple parameters to a single macro, then experiment with scaling and inverting their range without changing any of the track automation on the macro itself. You can add saturation before a filter to give it some nice harmonics to cut through. I do this with multiple saturators, running in parallel, 50% wet. When filtering bass, take care not to compromise the low end when using filter types like morph, bandpass, and highpass. You can use a separate chain to add back your sub. And once you've got a good rack, make sure you save it to your library to use in other projects and save yourself tons of time in the future. If you guys have liked what we covered here today and you want to get deeper into synthesis and work on your bass sound design skills, then come check out my Blitz Bass Sound Design Ultra class back on my site. We do all the ninja tricks and pro tips for making super hard-hitting, heavily engineered bass for electronic music. I've got a whole playlist of free videos on the course product page on the site, so click the link and check them out. That's a wrap on this tutorial. Thanks for checking out the vid, guys. Don't forget to grab the free downloads below, and please like the video and subscribe to the channel to stay frosty on all of our updates. I'll catch you soon. Peace.